Why has it got to this level? Are you feeling How, how did this travesty for the Labor Party happen? Thank you. Can I confirm I will be a candidate in tomorrow's ballot? And apart from that statement, I haven't got any other statement at this time. Do you, you believe you can win the Prime Minister? Thank you. Do you believe you can win this villa? The leadership ballot is over, that Paul Keating, and we emphasise at this stage, we are yet to confirm this, has won the leadership ballot by 56 votes to 51. You're watching a special Labor leadership edition of A Current Affair, and we're back with more in just a moment. ...underground campaign to undermine Bob Hawke really got underway, has uh, kept at least a few sentimental votes supporting Bob Hawke if that is indeed the case. Just repeating then, ABC News has been told by at least one minister's office that there is a result, that the result of the ballot is Paul Keating 56-51. If that's the case, Paul Keating will finally have made it into the lodge and Bob Hawke, after nine years, nine very successful years as Labor Prime Minister, the most successful Labor Prime Minister ever, will be on his way out. But for now, that's all from Parliament House. That a Jim McKeonan has to say. The uh, parliamentary, Labour Party, parliamentary Labour Party have just elected a new leader, and consequently a new Prime Minister of Australia. Paul Keating uh, polled five votes ahead of Bob Hawke, 56 to 51. Thank you very much. Well, that's it. So Malik was right. 56 to 51. Paul Keating, the new Prime Minister of Australia. So he's got that handsome advantage that he wanted. He was quite happy with one vote as, uh, to scrape over it, as they say. The nose is as good as a length in the straight. But he's won. Paul Keating is the Prime Minister tonight. Well, the big question, Dennis, I guess, is uh, what, what difference is it going to make, in your opinion? Well, I think, first of all, the economy will become a great deal more expansionist. But the real big problem for Paul Keating is going to be how does he begin what Bob Hawke's had these last eight years, the love affair with the Australian people. He's immensely unpopular. Look, we're just seeing now some of the MPs coming out. Uh, not too many comments from them at this stage. We are expecting, as the night progresses, uh, the victor to have a press conference. At this stage, they're looking at around about 9 o'clock. That's unconfirmed, but around 9 o'clock Eastern time to hear from the new Prime Minister, Paul Keating. Perhaps before that, uh, Bob, Bob Hawke will address us in a press conference here. Just not sure about this because it's a great state of flux, but as we speak, 56 to 51 of Australia and as we talk to you you're watching pictures live from the corridors outside the uh, the caucus ballot room and here now is the new leader of the Labor Party and of greater importance the new Prime Minister of Australia Paul Keating and he's uh, approaching uh, a large section of the parliamentary press gallery newsmen and women waiting for his first words having won the Labor leadership ballot by 56 votes to 51. Ros Kelly uh, with him. Now here's Mr Keating. Well, that's a, uh, it's a great honour to be elected leader of the Labor Party. It's, uh, it's a very, it's a very, it's a very humbling, it's a very humbling experience and uh, I feel the poignancy of the moment. What do you have to say to Mr Hawke now, Mr Keating, after eight years? Uh, I thank him most sincerely. There's uh, Senator Stephen Loosley, and you've just heard the uh, Dr Neil Blewett just coming through the throng now with the Speaker of the House, Leo Maclay. But you've just heard the first words from the new Labor Prime Minister of Australia, Paul Keating. There's Deputy Prime Minister Brian Howe. Happy with the result, gentlemen. Please stay on as Deputy. No comment uh, to the media as they walk out of the meeting. These are caucus members. Uh, there's John Dawkins. Now, we understand at this stage that uh, Prime Minister, or former Labor Prime Minister Bob Hawke, uh, has had nothing to say thus far, nor have uh, any of the 51 members of the Labor Party caucus that voted for him. But uh, unfortunately for Mr Hawke, there simply weren't enough numbers. He was defeated by Paul Keating, 56 votes to 51. Now, Laurie Oakes back in Canberra as we wait for, wait for more action in the corridors. Paul Keating has an immense task in front of him. He does. His first task is to try and reunite the party, Steve. It's a uh... Uh, it, it's very divided. The first person to leave the caucus room was a left-winger, John Scott, and his bitter comment was that uh, even a drover's dog could lead this government to defeat. 
Now, that's a, a play on Bill Hayden's famous comment when he lost the leadership that mm. a drover's dog could win the 83 election. That shows the bitterness. We've had some shouting matches between Labor MPs in the corridors today. It'll take a lot of political skill to get this party back together. Laurie, do you think that the, the result, 56-51 in favour of Paul Keating, might produce some uh, early uh, premature retirements, resignations, by-elections? Well, I think there'll be a by-election in the seat of wills. I don't think Bob Hawke will hang around. I don't think the party will want him to hang around, even if it means the risk of losing his seat in a by-election. The Labor Party wants this leadership thing behind it, and Bob Hawke in Parliament, still in Parliament, would be a reminder of, uh, of the bitterness of the leadership row. Yeah, Barry Cohen, how much bitterness do you anticipate m might follow? I mean, we're talking about a, a surprisingly close result. Well, it's obvious there's a great deal of bitterness, and I think Laurie's absolutely... All right, Barry, sorry, can I interrupt there? The former leader of the Labor Party, Australia's former Prime Minister Bob Hawke, now coming up the corridor, one of the corridors in Parliament House in Canberra, having just, in the last few minutes, lost the leadership of the Labor Party by 56 votes to 51, 56 votes in favour of Paul Keating. Now, Mr Hawke uh, is just ambling along that corridor now with some of his supporters, some of the 51 who voted for him in a secret ballot. Uh, we're not sure whether, in fact, uh, he is going to say anything to the media who've been waiting for the result and have just heard from Paul Keating. Uh, we'll cross back to Parliament House. Here's Bob Hawke now. Mr. Hawke, how do you feel? I feel like a press conference a little bit like... Fair contest, Mr. Hawke. Well, there you are. The, uh, the advance advice was that Mr Hawke would be saying little, if anything, uh, until a full news conference, and he continues his way up the corridor uh, with some of those who've supported him. Uh, one of his main numbers crunchers, uh, Senator Robert Ray. Laurie, what happens to people like Senator Ray and, uh, and John Button and, and Kim Beasley and Simon Crean? What, I mean, what's their expectation tonight? That they'll be moved from one portfolio to another? They'll hang on to what they've got? Well, John Button, of course, was a Keating supporter, and my understanding is Paul Keating wants him to stay around in his present position. Because there was Rob a feeling he'd leave. There was, but yeah. I, I don't think that's the, that's the Keating view that that should happen. Robert Ray and Paul Keating have uh, had an active dislike of each other for a long time, partly over issues, partly personal stuff. But Robert Ray, I understand, is, uh, is quite willing now to try and make it work, to try and uh, get behind Paul Keating. Uh, he gave certain undertakings earlier in the day, I believe, that uh, he wouldn't rock the boat. He would stay around and help the government and the Labor Party. So, Laurie, what happens to Bob Hawke now? I mean, you, you say your expectation is that he'll go. Yeah. Uh, but what does he do? How does well, he handle defeat? Well, he's handling it pretty well. The, the thing that struck me today is the grit that he's shown. I mean, he, he, it's, it's a real class act today. He's known all day that he didn't have the numbers. He went into Parliament and gave one of his best performances for a long while. He's shown dignity. He's shown humour, uh, compassion for his staff, the whole lot. I, I think uh, the way he's leaving office is, is, is a real tribute to him. And I think if, if he performed like this a bit earlier, perhaps it wouldn't be happening. Uh, Barry Cohen, Cohen, come in on, on this one with us. How do you, you know Bob Hawke? How do you think he's going to handle defeat? I mean, he hasn't had many. No, I, as a matter of fact, I can't think of it a defeat that he's had before, anything of any significance. No, I, I mean, I'm very pleased to hear what Laurie says because I think it's very important for his, his uh, image. I hope he doesn't uh, resign from Parliament because I was very disappointed to see Malcolm Fraser spit the, uh, the dummy and, and go, you know, be, and come back into Parliament as a backbencher. It's going to be a very devastating blow to Bob, but hopefully he'll recover from it quickly. But uh, the thing that I think is difficult is that no Labor leader in history has ever taken over a Labor Party with more lead in its saddlebag than Paul Keating has at the moment. Mm. I mean, to yeah. have thrown out a Labor Prime Minister, uh, the most victorious in history, uh, to be the most unpopular man in, in, in the country at the moment politically, yeah. All and right. then in the middle of a recession, he's got a hell of a job to do. OK. Gary Morgan, you've been sitting in our studios in Melbourne, listening to all of this, now fully aware of the result of the leadership ballot. Australia has a new Prime Minister. How is Australia going to react to that? How are the people out in the heartland of Australia going to take this? Well, I think Australians will give him a go. I think that Australians would like to see change. They'd like to see a different direction from the Labor Party. And I think Mr Keating is going to be given a go by the electorate. Right. may not last too long if he can't solve the problems, but he'll... The electorate will give him a go for sure. Laurie Oakes in Canberra, final comment from you. Can Paul Keating turn it all around, reunite the party, change his image, lead Labor to victory at the next election whenever? 
Well, he faces a superhuman job, Steve. The Labor Party is now a smoking ruin. He's very unpopular, and uh, I don't think he can do it. But uh, if anyone can, I guess it's him. He's a brilliant politician. All right. Laurie Oakes, the Nine Network's national political editor in Canberra, thank you for joining us. Gary Morgan, thank you for joining us from Melbourne. Barry Cohen, thank you for joining us and staying with us in the studio. And that's all in this special edition of uh, A Current Affair in which we have witnessed political history in the making. Paul Keating, the new Labor Prime Minister of Australia. We bid you farewell tonight with images of Bob Hawke over nine years. Good night to you. significant problems in the past four years. The fact is I had only uh, one shot in the locker and I fired it. Paul accepted the decision graciously, congratulated me and uh, indicated there would be no further challenge from him. <laughs>